Hello, welcome to section 4 of the Fine Art Dealer Training Classes. Well, we talk about arrow concept. We are going to talk about it now. Okay, what is arrow concept? Well, first of all, remember we talked about arrow system last time, which is nothing more than a, an improvement on what's out there. The moment we go to arrow concept, the big deal is in this piece. This piece is, art, is everything about arrow concept. So every single component you see right here is the addition of this piece. Find out actually own three separate patterns on using of these tubes besides the component itself. What is so special about this piece? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. First of all, let, let's go back to history so you know this actually don't come by accident. It's after all the years of trial and error and doing things. Well, let me give you an idea where it come about. In early 2007, I got to met the gentleman named Jim Camp, and he got a really powerful crossbow, 425 feet per second back then. But at that moment, the only crossbow arrow that we can technically find is actually a gold tip laser two, which is all, which is nothing more than a gold tip series 22 cut down to 22 inches, or or some people some people prefer 20, but most people use 22 inches. What's the problem with this process? Well, first of all, if you notice, go tip 22, it's a 300 spine shaft. And you're going to shoot a 400 grain arrow at 300 spine at 425 feet per second. That's not going to work too well. <coughs> so, <coughs> so in order to maintain that 400 magic weight, we did a few things. We use gold tip 22's insert and we've designed a carbon tubing that's 298,000, about 300 spine to put inside this arrow. See, remember the gold tip 300, the gold tip 22 is a 300 spine. We go ahead at a 10 and a half inch, 100, 300 spine. This arrow itself, right here, this shaft is 300 spine. To drop the system to closer, at the overall to closer to about 200 spine. So we add a 10 and a half inch inner tube to a gold tip 22 that's 300 spine to accomplish close to 180 to 200 spine. But of course it's not a long arrow. It, it worked okay, except we got a small problem because you can see that the insert and tubing touch each other. So after intensive testing, especially at that moment we should spider web target, this is where the arrow cracked, right here. That's the beginning and the end of arrow bolt one. What, what, how do we do it? So at the same time, we find out gold tip is going to make the laser three, which is a 250 spine version of the laser two. At the meantime, we also find a way to overcome the cracking of the shaft right here. What do we do? We invented and patented the double shoulder insert. See that there's two shoulders right here. That's called the arrow insert D. Now, that we're talking back in 2011. What it really does is that it allowed this tubing to go onto this insert first. Then this whole thing got glued into this tube. Well then, the weak point of this spot is, no, is gone. But at the same time, we up the spine to 200, 250 spine because it's a laser three compared to a laser two. The arrow got much better significantly better. But at the same time, you know, we sell quite a bit of it, so we move to the next step. What we do is that we contract with gold tip and actually make the laser two and laser three together originally. That's the reason you see the 250 right here, that's the spine of the laser three and the 300 is spine of the laser two. We never did make this one. So the only thing we actually made is the arrow bow two, 250. That's how we come up with this. But in the process, you can see that the insert changed, the shaft changed, the spine changed. And we learned a lot more about this. What, what is the real deal behind it? I'm going to go into a little bit detail on the inserts. First of all, you can see how the revolution of the insert process. You see that originally when we first invented arrow insert A, by the way, arrow insert A was after arrow insert D. So after we make the first arrow insert D for the laser, uh, the, uh, for the Aero Bow 2 250 and also the Laser 3, we come up with this because we still have a problem with people with the, uh, when you hit something hard, 
the arrow should come out just like the previous will tell you how they, the, the arrow should go out of the insert and cause mushroom effect. Now what we do, we already know that that was the technology we used. See that? You see a secondary tubing going into it, this whole thing protected the whole thing, right? This is arrow insert D. We know after arrow insert D, or the common we design arrow insert A. It only makes sense because these still have the same problem because when you hit hard enough, this part of the carbon tubing is going to crumble, although the gluing effect on this part is good, but we find out it's not enough. So why not just combine the two technology? I'm, by the way, we'll discontinue that already because I don't think it's as good as we did. This is discontinued in 2012, so we're talking eight years ago. Now, what do we do? We now did reverse tapered and double shoulder, both. And we call it the hybrid system. That's where the arrow insert H come in. We should call it arrow insert too, but you know, at that moment, the word hybrid is pretty big in 2012. Everybody say hybrid, hybrid, cars and so on. That hybrid stuck. So we call it arrow insert H for hybrid. So you can see that you got a double shoulder technology and a reverse tapered. That's how the whole thing become the arrow insert H. By the way, the word you see H, it's the entire lineup of the entire finite stuff. Every time you see the word H, that pretty much tell you it's arrow concept systems. Now, what is arrow concept system and what does it do? This is what we discovered. First of all, let's talk about the history on how arrow behave when you shoot it. Normal arrow with no inner tube and so on. You've got the knock point and you've got the node, okay? This is the amplitude of the entire arrow shaft when it was being compressed. That's the level we're talking about. This is going to reduce itself as an arrow oxalate in air. So that this is the maximum this arrow is going to be, and this is where your arrow rests or the front of your crossbow anchor point is on that shaft. Now what happens if we add a secondary tube to it? Now this is quite interesting. First of all, you notice that that no, no point, or called the node, because of this tubing, we actually elongate it significantly. I mean, yes, is that still a perfect point? Yes, you know the perfect point is going to be right here. But what happened is that because the angle is so shallow, this hole become a zone. That we say instead of a null point, you got a null zone now. That means your arrow is a lot more forgiving because you don't have to hit that perfect point to get a consistency. But the real deal is the amplitude difference. See that? Well, that, that, that's, that may not look like a lot, but let me give you some numbers so you have some idea what the difference is. On a typical 400 feet per second, this arrow, without the arrow concept system, on the same identical shaft, we have found out it would take 16 to 18 yards for this to go into a tight elliptical gyro. But the moment we put an arrow con it was the same weight, now remember we're talking same weight. So imagine this, we're talking the tubing plus the insert combined equals to the insert in this configuration. So both arrows are the same weight. So the only difference we're talking about is the amplitude difference in energy consumed consume and reserved and conserved. What we have discovered is that if you put an arrow concept tubing in the shaft, regardless of the design, this, if you the same weight, this arrow is going to stop flexing beyond the initial amplitude variance to as little as what it behaved like in 20 yards, in 9 feet. Now what does that mean? That means if you really look at it, the total oscillation difference and the harmonic energy change. That means remember when this arrow is flexing, the elasticity energy is being expensed. Because anytime something moves, energy is being consumed or else it won't move. So during that process, the difference in energy consumption, you pure, pure distance, that means this is going to stop at 9 feet, this is going to stop at eight, say 16 to 18 yards, is 600%. But in actual calculation, I mean we are very lucky that I got uh, Mr. Rod White, the Olympic gold medalist, do a lot, quite a bit of testing for me. We discover at 40 yards, this thing actually used more, more than 8% energy. In the extreme cases, can be as much as 38% if your entire arrow weight is maintained around 400, 400 grains. 
So we're not talking a few margin, but if you only shoot 20, 30 yards, and you shoot around 400 grain, remember the moment you up the weight, the momentum calculation throw a whole wrench in this. But we are talking on a high speed crossbow, 400 grains, or a 70 pound, 350 grains, because at that moment, we didn't have the word momentum involved because the mass of the arrow is reasonable low. So every single energy consumed and also conserved is significant. We are talking an 8% difference to a 38% difference. Well, it may be 12, but still 12 compared to 38. That's a margin of 300% in energy consumption and energy conservation process. That's not a small deal. Now, how do you find out? I mean, this is what the easiest way to find out. You can build yourself an arrow with or without my arrow concept and make them the same weight. Shoot them at 315 feet per second or above at 60 yards you're gonna see the arrow gonna hit, if normally, about 12 to 15 inch difference at 60 yards. Just by using the tube. Remember, we're talking same weight arrow, same bow, with no veins. So we are not even talking about throwing arrow vein with the gyroscopic reaction so on, we're talking pure tubing in this case. Now let's go one step further. So, we know about this whole process. What are we really doing? Is harmonic dampening. In other words, how did this tube make this thing arrow flex so much less? Actually, we didn't know this until we sort of dig into it. What it is that the arrow, every single carbon arrow has its own quote unquote harmonic in it. Your basic oxidation cycle. The moment you throw a secondary tubing, I see most of our CTIs called carbon tube inner tubings, are actually made of ultra high modular carbon. We are talking 28, 32 or up to 40 million modular carbon. So can you imagine when you put a carbon tubing that have different modulation on the outer arrow? Because they have different modulation, the moment they try to flex, they cancel each other. That's what the harmonic dampening process is about. Now we don't know this, but we find out it did. And then we reverse find out that we actually do a harmonic dampening on the entire arrow shaft. Now, how can it be done more? Well, this is where it gets even more interesting. I got two gentlemen, both told me, uh, Tony Warden was telling me in Crossbow and my good buddy out in New Jersey, uh, Dave Murray was thinking, why not just go ahead and add another tube to the back of the shaft? You say, wait a minute, you just lower the FOC and so on. But what we have discovered by putting the arrow concept 2.0, which is adding a tubing to the back of the arrow shaft, we actually changed the amplitude of the entire arrow shaft significantly. We are talking about close to a 45% re further reduction. That means this arrow, this or this crossbow arrow, compared to this will be my nine feet, we are talking five feet. Now look at this section. This section actually, when we talk about the next arrow build, and then not to mention what we are talking about arrow thing, two and three, it really do all the magic. Because all of a sudden, this arrow inside holding a front with heavy FOC, the tail of this arrow go up and down like this. Because with the arrow concept 2.0 with a segment of carbon in it, the entire arrow flex cycle dropped to about five feet. You go into a type electro gyro. The moment you go to type electro gyro, arrow two thing two and arrow thing three can do its work. The entire fish telling process like this no longer behave because he's actually doing this now. That's the problem when they look about arrow, thing, arrow concept 2.0. But then there is limitations. We discovered that especially um, Mr. Mr. White have helped us a lot in research. The moment the inner tubing in the front exceed 45%, the arrow no longer flex correctly. It actually buck like a, like a, like a, uh, like a raw donkey or, a small, or, or what you call it, a young stallion. It literally, at that moment, the front section of arrow just go like this and this. It literally, the harmonics of the whole arrow, this curveness disappeared. That's the reason we are very specific on our pattern. The front arrow tube and the back arrow tube, both of them should never exceed 45% of the entire arrow length. So, but at the same time, you know, there's other issues. Other issue like how do you put this tube inside this shaft correctly? That's the reason, you know, we sell this tube to all our dealers who do not have vacuum system, no more than six inch. Why is it so important that six inch? Because see, if you put glue on this and you slide this piece in, if you, if you push this thing more than six inches, there's no more glue on here. 
Yes, the glue is very specific. We actually went through hell and back just to get the right glue. The one we use is a Hanko glue, it's, AG, it's called AGUSSE. It is a two-part epoxy, but it has over a 2C penetration into glass and carbon fiber. So that when this tube got glued with this tube, these two tube surfaces are bond 4C, two in, two out. What you're really trying to prevent is layer separation between the two carbon when you flex it. That's the reason we use a glue that is no less than, okay, 36 hours to cure. What you really want, to, what we are really trying to promote is ultra long molecules. Because short molecule, when you flex it, it starts to break, it becomes powder. So all of a sudden, the spine of the outer shaft and inner shaft will be inconsistent because it no longer binds together as a whole, becomes separate. That's the reason we call it powder formation. What we really want to do is that we want this to behave like it was original and permanent part of this. So you got harmonic cancellation. But at the same time, these two things cannot be bonded solidly. You had to flex. Because the entire arrow is going to go ovalization right in this process, in here. So these two arrows still bend, but not a lot. You will bend. That's where the harmonic cancellation process come in. But we also have to prevent layer separation. So those two are contradictory, and that's the reason when we bought the HUSSE, it's close to twelve hundred dollars per per gallon. We mix. We have to separate it. When you get it from us, you can see that you got a hardener and you got the resin, and you will have thirty six hours for the solid. But that gives you the flexibility because of the long duration of curing. Now you can have a long molecule over the entire shaft, and yes. If you want to glue more than six inches, you're going to need vacuum system and our special tools. Now you know why we don't recommend you use anything over six inch to glue. Now for the people who glue the thing on the back, a lot more tricks to it. Since we're here, we'll talk about it. For the guy who like to glue on the back, very critical. Clean the inside with acetone thoroughly. Clean the tubing with acetone thoroughly. Now we have to deal with the chamfering process. You actually have to chamfer this end and put a glue into it and a glue out to it and put it in. When you put it in, that's because there's nothing. See right here, you got your double, you got the second shoulder to hold the tube. This one you have none. Now we're gonna go into a video of exactly how to build the arrow concept 1.0 and 2.0 in the future because this has to be hands-on. That's the reason until you are certified and do it over a year, I do not recommend any dealer going arrow concept 2.0. Okay, now. You know about the concepts and so on. It's great, everybody wants to use it. But now we're dealing with, there's a lot of arrow size. And with the arrow size, there's a lot of inserts. Inserts are not inserts. We and Finox know that inside well, because right here, this page alone, you're looking at about three US patents right there. What is so special about all these inserts? How many of them, you look at it, there's a big list of it. Yes, there's that many arrow sizes. And every one of them has reason behind it, which we're gonna go into detail of each one of them. First of all, we wanna talk about the 202 to 205 size. Most people recognize it's a 204 size. Yes, some company make it all the way to 207. Would it work? With the arrow concept, yes, but you need to do a lot more work. We'll talk more about when you have oversized, undersized, when we deal with the 320 size, because there's time a lot more involved. On a 202 size, which is your basic, your, your Goldie Pianetics, your, uh, uh, your Black Eagle Rampage, or your Eastern Access, they're the 202 size, okay? What do we make? Right on the get-go, when we first started it, we make the 202 standard in aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. Because we figure that people need, when, when they shoot 202, they want penetration. So right on the get-go, we start with the 200 size, but look at it. Look at the thickness of this inner tube. It's 7.7 .7 grain per inch. Now people say, why do you make three? The difference is that you can have 18, 30, and 55, right on the insert. Yes, that's nearly double right here. 18 to 55 is triple. Now you can decide how you want to handle it because you're, you're very, your entire build is no longer limited by what you can do anymore. Because right on the get-go, you got three different weight with three, I mean, by the way, they are about the same strength. This is not junk 60, 61, this is 70, 75. This is 303 in the early version and 420 in the late version. This is GR5 titanium. And look at that tube, it's a 7.7 .7 grain tube. Okay, this tube alone 
it's a it's a 200 but it's a 300 spine shaft imagine this you're going to put a 300 spine six inch shaft on behind this now at 7.7 grain per inch just say you put us you put a you put a say ridiculously put a 10 grain behind it that's 77 grain on the tubing alone six inch that's 50 grains 50 grains plus 50 grain stainless you're putting just the inside alone is over 100 grains but the beauty of it this is a carbon tube and we already talked about it anything over six inch you can't glue it right but how about less so you glue three inches the effect is not big i can tell you that we found out that no less than three inch is needed to function correctly otherwise the no the harmonic cancellation really don't happen it's too little so three to six inches is the sweet spot but wait a minute three to six inch yes you i think you just got it that means you can cut this thing to match your desired frontal weight and desired flex but at the end of the day 7.7 .7 is a quite heavy and most people use this shaft and by the way this is a shaft that a lot of people use for cape buffalo pigs giraffe rhino but no whatever i know hippos rhino we haven't we're not allowed to shoot yet <laughs> there's too little of them but then a lot of people will do deer they really don't like this they figure that this is too heavy even with the 18 plus say six so this 18 becomes 60 grain in the front side. Well, that's a little bit on the heavy side, but let me tell you one thing about the calculation of this part. Because it's a, it's a 300 spine tube, okay? Imagine this, if you got a 30 inch shaft that you want to use, the moment you put the, the, the heavy weight that we have, you need to rethink the, the, the final result of the arrow shaft. This is where the spine changing ability of arrow concept kicked in. Because a normal say you've got a 30 inch shaft, right? So you need to think about 70 pound, 30 inch, you better have a three, minimum 300 spine. But the moment you put in this heavy tubing, which is a 300 spine shaft on top of it, you can technically use whatever the length of this, say you put six inch in it, okay? Using 0.75 to 0.8 is what you get out of it. Now what does that mean? That means that if you have a 30 inch shaft, you go ahead and put this in. This is six inch. Mentally, you need to think about it. I just put a six inch 300 spine shaft into my arrow. The effective length of the arrow, just minus six times 0.75, which is four and a half inch. Which means your 30 inch arrow, all of a sudden, you drop four and a half inch in, in length. That means your arrow, effectively you behave like it is only 25 and a half inch on the spine so you look at the spine chart your calculation chart they all come into play this is where your build knowledge and the know-how come into play because you all of a sudden think about it you can technically use a 350 spine shaft and at four and a half minus four and a half inch if you look at a fit chart at 25 and a half inch you can handle up to 80 pounds because you only got a 25 half inch arrow now because the first four and a half is so stiff, it's not part of the calculation. Now, let's go one step further. For the people who like this system but hated the weight because this tubing is so heavy, we actually make a light version, CTI-20L, okay? What it does, you know that it's nearly half the weight. But of course, when you're half the weight, you also lose some spine. That's where the calculation come in differently. Using the CTI-20L, when you have a 30 inch arrow, you put six inch in it, guess what? You only got three inch efficiency, approximately, based on the 350 spine. Of course, when you start lowering your spine weight on the shaft, that thing gets even more complicated. Because your entire shaft overall is not as heavy. So if you're, some people are crazy enough to put a 400 spine shaft and then use this, it literally will break two inch after this tubing because it become the weakest link. So don't go crazy. There's a balance. That's the reason we make two tubing and have this class to explain the difference. See that? We also make aluminum, stainless steel, titanium. But this time we use a thinner wall, just like you can see this ratio. The OD is the same, but the wall thickness is significantly thinner. And now you only have four grain per inch. Now, this is really good because now all of a sudden you have the benefit of the aluminum insert with the lightweight carbon, you can build a really, really efficient shaft. At the same time, you have oscillation, oscillation, cancellation control without going overboard with weight. But at the same time, if we say you go for a bison, 
pick the stainless steel, drop 7.7 .7 grain in the front and put another 7.7 .7 grain on the back. Your arrow will go into that animal like it was a nail. It will no longer behave like an arrow. Because you, with this system, you have a significant cancel of, of the harmonic, harmonic oscillation process. But then at the same time, you can also mix the two, like putting this in the front and this into the back. This is time experience come in. You're not going to learn this until you build up like 20, 30, 40 dozen arrows. So if you start doing it, learn Arrow Concept 1.0 and start experimenting with it. Because until you get the good feel of it, it's not going to work for you. So take it easy and try to understand this. And this reason I did this class. This is not simple. Remember, we are talking 202 only. One size. There's six options of inserts with two options of tubing that you can cut and slice and change the weight of the entire system and how it behaves. Yes, you are talking spine changings, zone changing, and an amplitude reduction with oscillation reduction. You can't get more complicated than that. But at the same time, just like everything else, if it's not that complicated and that sophisticated, why do we even bother doing it? <laughs> because we already know the old stuff works, but to a certain extent, anytime we go to the next step, it is not that easy. If it's easy, everybody have done it. Now, let's look at the next one, the standard size. This is where we actually did a lot for our dealers. Remember the 246 and 242, 246 is actually a standard size arrows. We started with just aluminum. A lot of dealers told us they really need weight, so we make one in stainless steel. Yes, this is arrow concept, this is arrow concept inserts, which means it's got reverse taper, double shoulder. You can see how to put a tubing on it. Now, as a deal, as a certified trained dealer, you are allowed to use these two inserts. Why? This is what I make for you guys and you guys only. I don't even sell it. Only you who are certified and trained dealer are allowed to sell this too. Because these two are both $14.95 a dozen retail. This started in $19.95 and this is $39.95. What's the big deal about this too? This is made of brass, which is not ideal, but it's a great price point product. Because my aluminum is already $19.95. This is only $14.95. So what is this aluminum? This is a lower grade aluminum. This is a 6061 aluminum. And this is not CNC made. This is actually out of screw machine. Both are out of screw machine. These two are out of CNC. So we are looking at $14.95, $19.95, and $39.95. But at the same time, you got a 5.2 grain per inch tubing. Remember again, you can cut it in any shape or form to go to a standard size arrow, front and back. That's what you do in 204 and 246. Now, let's go something even more interesting. The 300, the, must, the mother of all invention of the, of, the air, of the arrow concept. Right on the get-go, you notice we dropped the D altogether. At the same time, just on the 300 size, we got a, on the 300 side, we got 8.9 grain per inch for this four insert. Same thing with the 246. I have the aluminum 7071, I have the aluminum 6061, brass and stainless steel. Again, 1995, 1495, and 3995. We're talking retail here. You know you're a dealer, you got your percentage point drop. I'm not gonna mention it in video because too many people look at it. Then a lot of people say, well, you know, as some of the modulation carbon go higher and people want lighter weight, we go ahead and make the next sections. Yes, look at that. We got a new CTI 300. By the way, it's seven grain per inch. We just want to be safe, put 7.1. The average is 6.9 to seven grain per inch. That's a CTI 30L. So in other words, you can see the rings are thinner, but this is a much higher modulation carbon. We're talking 32 million module carbon in single layer. Why do we make this two? Because see, this one gives you weight and stability. This one gives you performance. Yes, you've noticed that we also make it in the, in the Aeroscope G, okay? This is a such heavy FOC deal. We're talking momentum to the Wazoo because the insert alone is 100 grain. Then we also make between the 55, 70, we make a middle one. This one is 75. And of course, stainless steel, brass, aluminum, and uh, stainless, uh, alumin, uh, 70, 71, brass, 60, 61 and stainless, same as this. But this using the thinner tubing. This last six use a thinner one, this four using the thicker one. So why do, the th why do we have a heavy momentum using thinner? Because with this heavy momentum, we need a much higher modulation to control the tail of the shaft. 
We are playing with FOC to the bejesus on this one. That's the reason a lot of people say, you want heavy arrow? Now look, think about it. You got as light as 18 grains, as heavy as 100, with two choice of tubings. If you can't, with this arsenal, you can't build your perfect arrow for your friend or your customer from a big wino hitter all the way to a 120 yard high wind, ultra fast arrow shaft, you can do it all. Remember, that is a difference, 8.5 to 7 in this. And not to mention, see the insert of the light delivery is significantly shorter. So this is a high speed, performance based. Think about it, this is motorcycle. This is your sedan. This is your trucks. What do you want them to do? The moment you understand it, you can play with it. Then you got your weight, weight, price point, price point. Performance. See, think through it. Your customer will appreciate a lot more the moment you're able to show them all this. And remember, this is 8.5 grain. You can actually bought this shop pre-installed with this from us because we got vacuum system. We can actually have this shaft all the way to a 10 and a half inch on a 22 inch, which is just shy on a 22, more than less than, no more than 50%. Oh, I would be conservative calling 45%. Okay, we talk about all the hunting stuff, but how much benefit you can get out of the packer stuff? The answer is a lot. That's the reason you notice on the 315 size, like the Element Rock, the PS23, uh, and, or the, even the Fine Arc Air Weave 315. We make the CTI 310 to using the Arrow Insert H315. Now remember, all the Finax system will move away the 22 percentage wise. No, the ratio wise. So you like a 22, 64 inch? No, we don't want to deal with that anymore. We go with 315 thousands. But at the same time, we notice a lot of new 315 old, uh, 20, 2364 size arrows, which have an idea of 320, like your Gold Tip 93 or your uh, uh, Eastern Super Drive 20, uh, Super Drive 23. Guess what? They have 320 inch old ID. Which means that we now have to go a little bit bigger than the 315. Although two shafts OD are the same, the ideas are different. This one on the Team 93 and also the Eastern Superdrive 23, the OD is a little bit bigger. That's the reason we make the 320. But in most cases, you already know that because of the way the insert works, you can actually put the 310 in it to give you a little bit more strength because the, the 310 actually in actuality had about 5,000 heavier in, in, the, in the wall thickness compared to the 320 because although it's bigger, it's actually lighter. That's how you can play with the, the 315 the 320 size target arrow. Now you saw this, now we're gonna go to the next step, something more fun. Oh, you can see the whole thing right there. We have the 202 size, the 246, the 300, 315, and 320. Now, when you look at all this, what does that mean? This is the tubing that each individual use. So yes, at this moment, you're looking at seven uh, inner tubes to fit on all this insert for your arrows. That's a lot to sink in. But with the tools like this, now you have all the capability of playing with this tool. Okay, so how do I know what that means? Well, I figured that I'll show you my coding system. So you know exactly what it is. The first A, like remember all the inserts are A1A, whatever, or A1H. The word A means arrow, which everything find out makes arrow. The second, in, the second character is I. The most of the A1, uh, A, A, I, A, or A, I, H but we have exceptions, that's a D, destroyer. We'll talk about it the moment I finish this because we are talking about all the target specific stuff now. The third character is angled like A1A, uh, angle insert A, A1D, the double shoulder that was discontinued. Now I only have A1A and A1H. So you can technically ignore D altogether. The third characters and fourth one is actually the size plus specific. Like the 20 is, two, is the 204, the 2L is 204, the lighter version of the tubing, the 20 is to 23, 6, the, is the, uh, the H size, which the Eastern 
Ichnak, we call it the Enoch. The 24, of course, is 242 to 246. The entire three here is the standard version, light version, the heavy, which is uh, the uh, 75 grain, and the gyroscopic, that's 100 grain. Then you go into 31 is 310, and 32 is the 320. Pretty explanatory. And the last character is exactly the material. Now you can look at it. The moment you see the word aluminum in fine art, it means 7075, that's a 1995. Brass and the cheap aluminum are the 6061. The stainless are based on the basic 303 and 420. Depends on which generation. And yes, the T means titanium. We use that in GL5 titanium. Now, what is the... You notice last on the last presentation, we talked about the 166. We talked about how you can easily do the 166 with the insert A. Well, you know, it's a pretty thin shaft. <laughs> it's really a really thin shaft. And I noticed how many customers love the 166. So I dive into it a little bit more and give you this. This is the original one. See that? Reverse tapered. Remember that? This is what I give you 166 if you remember from the last uh, uh, arrow components. What can we do more of this? This is great, isn't it? But this is nothing more than an improved 166 insert. Of course, this is, this is new pattern stuff. But we're talking from this point down. This is nothing more than an insert on a 166. What can we do more? That's what we did. Look at that. Secondary tubing in it. It's not a lot. We're going to give you another hundreds lay rating in spine. So this, the moment you put this tubing, I mean, of course, we're not talking about like the uh, heavy arrow that you put a 300 spine tube in it. But no, this is going to be great for the kids. Like when you deal with six, 700 spine shafts, which usually break right here. Now, guess what? You put a secondary tubing in it. You just nearly double the entire strength of it. Not about spring in spine, spring in breakage. Because you usually see that, the pivot point right here, you're gonna break around here. But the moment you put a secondary tubing, it can yawn now. So what happened is that yes, we pretty much put the entire aero concept system in a 166 shaft and maintain everything. So, what do you end up with? Look at that. I knew, X stalker insert H. Because it's so special, we dropped the A for this, okay? Because we want people to recognize this entire thing is based on the stalker stem system. See this stem right here? So that's reason it's not an arrow insert, it's a stalker insert, which now using the stalker points, and yes, you're gonna get stalker broadhead by this four. We'll talk about that later. And that's, you put CTI tubing in it, and now, by the way, this is pattern, pattern, patterns. So we got a few more patterns coming on this one. But now all of a sudden, your 160, you can do all the fantastic stuff by second secondary tubing in it. And yes, this is gonna be not easy to glue. But at the same time, you know, effort and reward always come hand in hand. If it's simple, everybody could have done it, but this is not that simple. But at the same time, at least you know with what you have learned in the 204, 300, you can now do in the 166. Yes, 166 is an arrow concept now. Okay. <laughs> what else we can do with arrow concept? Arrow concept give an arrow fantastic recovery capability, ultra lightweight. What does it remind you of? Target arrow system. Well, you know, anybody went in, into the 3D circuit noticed the number one, the biggest segment of the customers are in the hunter class which means screw in field point, insert and so on, right? And you got so many guys to play. And see, what's the difference? What is this so big about destroyer? You notice the insert is not flat, but angle forward, no less than 40 degree. This is beyond 40 degree, okay? You got your reverse taper right here, right? Which is arrow insert A technology. You also got your double shoulder right here. See that, the secondary tubing? So these have all the benefit of harmonic cancellation process. You got the, you can't, you can't hit something hard and cause the arrow to blow out. But look at that, the insert is tapered in the front. What's going on? This is what happened. 
Now we can put a six millimeter fuel point on this. And this is what it looks like when you put a 65 grain fuel point on our destroyer. That means the moment when you hit in the, somebody hawking the 12, the 10 ring or the 11 ring, the moment your arrow goes in it, using this part of the shoulder or this, first of all, it's close to impossible to glance out because your fuel point is a six millimeter. So glance out is pretty much out of the, won't happen to you. Second, you've got a double shoulder. So if people hit you on this side, guess what? It don't kill your arrow. But these two points, it's gonna shoulder or destroy any arrow that is hawking the 11 ring or the 10 ring. Yes, that's the reason it's called destroyer. Your friends won't like you, but in 3D competitions, you have no friends. <laughs> You're the only one who wants to win, right? So this is what the destroyer system do. Now, how many things we make? We make them in titanium stainless steel in the 315 size. We also make the 300 size for in stainless. By the way, that's 420. That's a very, very durable and re reasonable price. And then those are the points that will go in both systems. So technically on, on the on the three destroyer at this moment available to 315 and 300. The reason we go to 300 because there's so many of you guys who love the 22. It's such a good size. That's the reason we also make that in the Arrow Weave 300 and Spot Weave 300, which you can get in from your dealer. But the 315 is where you have a little bit performance. But at the same time, you don't sacrifice on just performance because you've got a protective tubing and we do offer that in titanium. So even when the arrow break, you can recover everything you put in front and go in another arrow. So consider that as investment. Mm -hmm. Now, how about you are in the really high-end competitions? Insert is, I mean, fuel points and insert is not what you're thinking of. You're thinking of gluing points. Yes, we carry that all the way on arrow concept into gluing points. See, about four year, five years ago, we actually make a fuel point. See, that whole fuel point is made of 420 stainless and use the 315 CTI onto the fuel point. And so you glue this whole thing onto the tube. It's fantastic. All of you love it. But that's one small problem. How do you change the weight? I mean, in the original concept is that you can cut the tubing in different length so you can change the weight, change the front of center. But that's very difficult. After you build it, what do you do? And especially when you guys put a put a uh, Aero Concept 2.0, put a secondary tubing on the back. You can't do much with it. So hearing your concern, we go one step further. And by the way, this is discontinued. And we build this Aero Concept Point 2.0 with Aero Concept Point weight. Now, what does that mean? That means now the back of this piece internally, you can actually screw this four different weight units. People say, why can't we just screw one off top, on top of the other? If you're really in competition, you understand the moment you screw one, in, one weight over the other one, no matter how careful you are, you'll be loose. The more you lose, you lose all accuracy. And you notice that all this weight have double O-rings on it. So the moment you go into it, you see in this perfectly, just like my arrow points, but this time they are weight. Now, how do you put the weight in it after you build an arrow or change the weight? Well, we give you this. See, this is called an arrow concept point weight two, which is nothing more than three pieces of stainless steel. You glue it into a 166 shaft, and we pick the back end exactly identical to a quarter hexagon drive so that you can use any quarter drive using the 166 tube to grow both ends. You can slide the whole thing into it and change your weight after you build an arrow. Yes, you are talking weight change after you build the arrow. Because so many times when you change your bow, you change your poundage, you find the FOC is not right, you want a little bit lighter, or heavier, what do you do? You can't do that with this. But with this, you are talking 40 grain difference. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. The 10 and 20 are made of aluminum, the 30 and 40 are made of brass. Now so far, this pretty much covers every possibility that anybody needs. If you guys need more, I'm more than willing to build it, but I think it's more than enough for what you need. 40 grain on a fuel point, glue in point, changing weight? <laughs> That's unheard of. Okay, now remember we talk about the arrow insert A, arrow insert D, arrow, uh, arrow insert H, no D. D is flat. So how do you get that angle? Well, this is the tool, arrow chamfering tool. I actually designed and built this. This is made of stainless steel. Yes, very durable. 
industrial diamond coated inside with silver embedded on it. Yes, the silver is what holds the diamond to be inside this tool. And then yes, you're putting on a drill and you push that thing to it. What does that really do? This is what it does. See that? You literally cut this two side off and give you that two chamfering. And we make two versions of it. We make the 100 and the 180. Now, if you are not a shop, 180 is what I sell to most customers. If you are a shop like me, you're impatient, but you know what you're doing, get the 100. The 100 have, is a much better piece. You can, get a, you can get a dozen arrow done chamfer with a tool. I would say about 30 seconds. This one is going to take you two minutes because it's that much. But at the same time, you know, if you do it yourself as a hobbyist, 180 is good. This is what you sell. That's what you use as a dealer. Let's get back to the beginning to the end. Remember we started how arrow bow is? That's what we have started and we come back to this same point. The arrow bow to 200, that's before I start making my own arrows. This is the last arrow that I collaborate with. As a matter of fact, this is built by Black Eagle for me. This is the Black Eagle Executioner. And those are the three CTI 300. Those are the 300 spine, 298 OD, and 246 ID. That's what this is. Front and back for Arrow Concept 2.0 with different inserts. Then for the guy who say, wait a minute, I remember you got a G. This actually is the zombie slayer, high module carbon, high module inner tube with excessive amount of weight. That's why you play with FOC. Remember momentum? That's what Arrow Bow G is. And finally, with the big boy. This is where you have to use a vacuum system because now we're talking over a thousand green arrow shaft on 22 inch. We have a, one, we have a, a 166, 164 tubing here. We have a 246 tubing here and a 300 tubing here and they all go together to form this gigantic dragon slayer. Because I don't think anybody who shoot a thousand green arrow. Well, you're pretty much made for a big game. That's recently called the Dragon Slayer. That pretty much concludes the whole arrow concept. Any question, let me know. So I think this is not a simple deal. So take your time, sink it in, because you have so much variation you can do with it. All right, have a good day.